All right, uh, Algebra 2, Unit 2.20b. So this is just some quiz prep questions for the seniors. Um, remember, <clears throat> you want to try these yourself. I will provide some guidance at the end of the video, but try them yourself. Um, I want, there, there are two things that um, must be the case. So obviously for each question you need to have your solution. And if your solution is, is great, it's, you know, it's perfect, that, that includes, you know, your explanation, whatnot, that's excellent. But some of us won't quite get there, right? We'll not be quite sure, or we'll have some questions. So you have a solution, and you also have questions. And the questions within a problem, so if you're working on some problem, you know, here, and here's all your work. Maybe you have some question, you're not quite sure. So question bubble, not sure why I did this, or what should I do here, or what is it that I'm trying to, you know, find maybe up in the original question, right? So those question bubbles should be there. If you have no questions, that's great. Then I will uh, go to you for your explanations. All right, go ahead and take a look at the questions on the next page, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, here are the five questions uh, for you to practice, uh, to help you practice and prepare. Um, question one, make sure that you uh, have a clearly written and explained um, explanation uh, so that you are getting down your thoughts that will help you um, when you are actually doing uh, problems like this uh, so that you can succinctly say what you're trying to find. Uh, questions two through four, um, make sure that you don't just circle some random number somewhere. Write out your answer in English so that it can be understood um, and give justification, right? Why or how do you know that your answer is correct? Um, and then uh, I will just say a few things um, about uh, each question to kind of help you um, if you if you get stuck at all, uh, so go ahead and give them a try. Give every problem a try. At least spend you know seven to uh, seven minutes before you uh, on each question before you you move on. Okay, and uh, and look at at any answers or solutions. All right. Uh, just going to say a few things. Uh, first off, number one is incredibly important. Um, what does it mean when you're looking for a solution uh, to the equation f of x equals g of x? Well, you're looking for when f of x equals g of x. In other words, you're looking for where the two functions intersect. Okay, when the functions intersect, that's a point, that's an x value that will make f of x equal to g of x. And so our methods um, for finding this, you know, graphing and then once we've graphed it, we have an approximate idea, a good idea of where they could intersect. And so then, the, the other important part that I bet a lot of people missed out on is we use a table to uh, start approximating those, those values. Uh, for number two, um, it, of course, going off what we just talked about, it's where the, the functions intersect. Now, they're never going to intersect out here. They will intersect once here and once here. So they'll have two solutions based on the fact that they're going to intersect twice. We want to draw a function which will force the equation f of x equals p of x to have no solutions. In other words, f of x can never intersect with p of x. So if I'm drawing a function, maybe I draw a function like this because f of x will always be um, positive and this p of x would always be negative. For number four and five, same basic idea. Um, we want to find solutions to um, the equation f of x equals g of x. In other words, we want to know when f of x is equal to seven. So we want to know when those two functions will intersect. So we graph them. Um, f of x is a simple quadratic, so um, graph that quadratic. Um, you know the basic shape. You've got to find the roots. A hint here that you're going to have to use the quadratic formula for f of x. 
and you can obviously look in your notes uh, for help with that. And then 7 is a pretty simple function, just the constant function at 7. And number 5, slightly more tricky, uh, but the same basic idea. We want to find where the functions intersect, so we're going to graph each function. Um, for f of x, if I just sketch real quick, f of x is a linear function. Uh, it has a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 2, so it looks something like this. And g of x is a cubic polynomial. Um, you can factor and find the roots and then graph your, your cubic polynomial. I have no idea what it looks like. Maybe it looks something like this. Okay, and then based on where you think they'll intersect, so if I'm just looking at this, uh, clearly they intersect here, but we know they're going to intersect somewhere here past where the cubic has its root, positive root out here, and it's going to intersect somewhere over here past where the, um, the cubic polynomial has uh, its, its negative root. And so just like you might have done for number four, you're going to make a table and this table, so you're going to have the, nat the x values that you're trying, and then you're going to plug them into both f and g, because you want to see when they're equal. So for example, I'll just give you an example, what if I plugged in 1 for x? Well, in, to f of x, 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. And if I plugged it into g, I would get 1 cubed minus 7 plus 12, um, which is 1 minus 7 is minus 6, uh, plus 12 is going to be positive 6. So I can see just right off the bat that when x is 1, f and g are not equal, so I'm going to go ahead and try um, again. And you want to work with your way based on where you think um, they are going to intersect. All right, hope that was helpful. See you guys tomorrow.